that hang on in there. So when you read bibliographies like Catherine Coopman and you're a woman in ministry, and you look at her life, and the woman had such a powerful anointing that she would just stand up and, and whole congregations would be slain yeah. under the power. Yeah. But she, just for the level of anointing that operated in her life, she had that much pain. Right. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. She couldn't be with the man she loved. Right. She had to be alone. Right. Wow. She paid a price. Yes. So when you look at that, you understand. Are y'all listening to me? So if you want to be an IT guru, you need to read about Bill Gates. He didn't start out where he is. In fact, they rejected his idea at first. And the rejection is what promoted him to where he is. Look at somebody and say, your rejection, your rejection is pushing you, is pushing you to, a success process. to a success process. God, you got to say that. It was the rejection of him. Same people that made the Apple computer. They were rejected. And now the best software you can get, the best machinery you can get, is a Mac. It was birthed out of re. Uh huh. What is your rejection birthing you? Oh. See, that's why you need information, and then you'll understand. Just because you're hurt or disappointed or rejected, don't mean your life is over. It means it's an opportunity. My God, for something great to be introduced into your life. This is powerful. Yes. I'm preaching to myself. <laughs> so you will not ask if you believe you don't deserve it. So if you're already down on you, if you already feel you've made that decision based on things happen to you where? Where? In your past. But your past is not now. And, and it doesn't have to become your future. Uh-huh. So if, if you make somewhere on, in the canvas of your mind maybe a decision, this is all I'm ever going to have, this is just the, this just the way life is, then you're not going to ask for anything greater, better, yes. right. or more accomplishing. Right. You're not even going to pursue anything better because after all, I don't deserve it. So the best kept secret is that God can bless you without you working two or three jobs. Amen. Right. Amen. Yes. We don't believe that. We don't believe that. We don't, we don't, we don't believe it. We don't believe it. Yeah. We don't believe it because the first time we're in a tight, we look for another We do not pursue God in a posture of faith. We don't use that. If you use the same energy that you have to use doing resumes and looking for jobs, if you would put those hours into prayer and you and painting you in your imagination what you need to happen, oh God, oh my God, I'm releasing somebody here tonight. It starts in your yeah! That's why you have to guard what you say. You have to guard the people that you allow to speak into your life. You have to guard the people that hang out with you. Because they are feeding your ideas. And they're feeding what you see. So you've got to learn, just because I live in the project now, does not mean I'm going to be here forever. Oh, I'm just passing because I see something different by myself and because I see it, I'm coming out of this. This is on the temple. Yeah. But we don't believe it. You say, how do you know? Because you're not walking in it. You have to believe it. You have to see it before it happens. So the next time you start thinking down or thinking negative or, or, or thinking opposite from
from who you are, quickly change that and say, no, 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 no. That was then. I'm creating a new future. I will overcome. I will come out. I will read my Bible. I will invest the time in prayer. I will meditate. God is present with me. And he's a refuge and a present help in trouble. Not another job. Not more hours. Not anything that's going to take me away from church and from service. God is my source. Therefore, I will lift my eyes to the hills from which come my help. My help come. Yay, hey, God, which made heaven and earth. And if he could make the heavens and the earth and cause it to be upheld by his word, then he can and will deliver me. This is a small thing that I'm asking. I'm not asking for another world. I'm not asking for another uh, universe. This is just something that's significant to me in my life. Oh, God, touch your head and say, Lord, help me believe. Philippians 2 and 5 says, then let this mind be. Let means allow. That means you're going to be thought. Remember, I told you when the Bible tells you to do something, it means that your greatest proclivity is to not do it. Right. Remember, I told you that. If you say, thou shalt not steal, it means you're a thief. Right. <laughs> Don't covet your neighbor's wife or your neighbor's possession. It means that you're covetous. Right. Or else you wouldn't have to tell you not to do it. Okay, remember, that's what the Bible is for. It's a book of instruction. Right. right? So he's telling you, let this mind be. Allow, put this mind in you active and alive. And then he tells you what kind of mind. Let the mind of Christ be in you. And when you go... Look at this, which I hope you will go read these scriptures. Yes. It goes on to say, understanding that he was equal with God, he didn't think it was a robbery because he understood who he was. His identity was the image and the likeness yes. of God. Well, what are you? So he said, allow the same mind that Christ had Put that in you. So what are you putting you? I'm a son of God. Yes. I'm an heir then and a joint. Yeah. And what was available to him is also uh, if I can use his same mind. And the world is doing this and, and they're walking in levels of success that the church has not mastered yet. 